widely shared Facebook post claims the United Nations is about to help Southern Cameroon independence with 24 local government areas in Nigeria to join the new country by the 10th of July 2020. The claim was also made in Nigeria's Guardian newspaper, which reported on June the 5th that Cameroonian President Paul Bia had withdrawn soldiers from the country's south and set the stage for the creation of the new state being spearheaded by the United Nations. There are also reports that President Muhammadu Buhari will announce the absorption of NPA volunteers into the federal civil service on 12th of June 2020. These reports have been debunked as fake news by President Buhari's aide on digital and new media, Tolu Ogulnese, and the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, respectively. Now, to share more light on this and speak on the importance of fact checking in today's media space is Nigeria editor, Africa Check, David Ajikobi. Good evening, Mr. Ajikobi. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Good evening. Thank you for joining us to clear all of this uh, fake news. Moving on. Tell us about fact checking, uh, the two reports that were mentioned earlier. Well, essentially, um, I mean, we've all, we've all been hearing about, a lot about fake news, misinformation and disinformation. So fact checking is essentially using tools and uh, methods to actually check the veracity of claims made in reports, or made by politicians, or just by anybody. I mean, because uh, the idea is that um, arguments or conversations around anything should be about to be evidence based and not about opinions or sentiments and things like that. And um, fact checking is very essential in, the, uh, 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 in, in journalism in Nigeria because Nigeria is a particularly peculiar country in the sense that we are multi-religious, we are multi-ethnic, we are uh, multicultural. You know. So you have a case where you know we are already underlying um, 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 tensions. So fake news can actually, and uh, misinformation and disinformation can actually find the embers of you know tribalism, religious conflicts, and things like that. Mm. So going back to these um, two uh, reports in question, um, so one of them was that the um, United Nations is carving out uh, a country from um, Nigeria and Cameroon, and even, I mean it was. It was going viral uh, last weekend, and we saw that. Uh, uh, so, what, what what would be the implication of having um, um, a news or, mis or misinformation like that you know, spreading across social media? Mm. I mean, can you imagine a case where maybe like, um, uh, it could cause tensions between between Nigeria and uh, uh, and, and Cameroon? Uh, you are we are all aware about the conflict happening in southern Cameroon and things like that, um, and, and different 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 things, you know. Uh, so essentially, what we did was we went to by, by going uh, look at, looking at the claim. But apart from uh, what uh, uh, the presidential aide uh, Tolu Ogunlesi said, we actually reached out to uh, the deputy spokesperson for the United uh, Nations Secretary General via an email, and he said, first and foremost, that's false. Nigeria is not seen any part of its country, uh, or Cameroon is not seen any part of its country for a new. United Nations country, you know, country. And he said, it's up, and I quote, uh, it's up to states to recognize or, or not recognize other government. This is not something determined by the United Nations. Um, you know, essentially saying that, you know, and we also spoke to experts. For example, we spoke to uh, Professor Sa uh, Sally Dowda, who is a political scientist and an, an expert in international relations, and a lecturer at the University of Abuja. And he told Africa Check that, you know, for example, the United Nations does not have the legal authority to create a new state, uh, you know, with any part of another sovereign state, you know. Right. So that itself is uh, it's false. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, you know, we related that claim as false. Um, the second one, uh, which was trending before um, the June 12 celebration, was that um, uh, President Muhammad bin Buhari was going to absorb and power volunteers into the federal civil service during his address on June 12. Uh, the prospect on June 12. And essentially, we looked at it. We said, "Look, for a lot of people, for thousands of people who are probably on the NPOWER project or program or whatever it is, and they see this uh, piece of information, is that the likelihood?" Um, and look, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead, Jacoby. Yeah, yeah. There's a likelihood that you know somebody somewhere is already jubilating that ah, they are going to employ me. You know, based on just looking at you know receiving this uh, piece of uh, information, mm. and they will decide, "Okay, well, let's look at the veracity behind the claim." You know. And then the first place we started from was to actually go back to the Ministry uh, for Humanitarian Affairs. And the first thing they told us was that, you know, 
Uh, there's no such thing. Mm. And also, the context that you have, to, and we have to think about it, this is Nigeria. Imagine how many people have been scammed, you know, for jobs. And misled. To say, yeah, I've been misled. And, you know, when people are misled, it's, it's easy to actually scam them. Which, we know job which, scams in this which country. Which takes me to my next you know? question, David. I'm sorry to interject. It takes me to my next question. Is it, it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that, you know, these stories go viral. Now, the question is, how do such stories gain traction enough to even get mentioned in reputable print media? Well, I think it's um, I think the, it's a it's a combination of a few things. But I would start with what happens generally and why news and false information uh, goes viral. I think the first thing is that uh, misinformation and disinformation keys into what we call our confirmation biases. Um, confirmation bias is when you already you have a, a preconceived notion about something, and then a piece of information. Plays into it. You tell her, hey, I knew it. And hey, I always knew that these people are not good or these people are bad or something like that. The idea is that either we all like it or not, we all ex we all have some sort of confirmation bias, and that is why we believe misinformation and disinformation, and that is why it spreads quickly. Because if I mean, so, sometimes you're not you're not you're not able to actually read yourself of confirmation bias, but it's allowed sometimes if you, if, you, if you could take a step back to say, okay, I'm a, I'm a Yoruba man. This piece of information I'm, re I'm receiving now is whipping up some sentiments inside me as a Yoruba man. So let me take a step back to say, okay, is this true? You know, just apply some level of critical thinking. You know, critical thinking is what evidence? Who said it? Did they see it themselves? Did somebody tell them? Or what, 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 what credible report, uh, um, news organizations have, have used it and things like that? Right. So I think that's one of the reasons why fake news spread because of mm. the confirmation bias and then because we're human beings. Right. The second part is that for when you said even credible media organizations, I think gatekeeping in uh, media organizations uh, needs to get better uh, in the sense that we're always in the hurry to publish stories. I'm a journalist myself. I was, I, you know, I, I led newsrooms uh, before becoming a fact checker. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that, you know, I understand the pressure to turn out news bulletins every other hour, top of the bottom of the hour and things like that. Fortunately, so David, we might have to wrap it there. I, I, I... <laughs> I'm sorry, but we are pressed for time. We will invite you again to continue this conversation. Thank you so very much, editor of uh, Africa Check, Nigeria editor for Africa Check. Thank you for your time and for the insight you've brought to this conversation also. Thanks. Thank you for having me.